Hello everyone. Let's say it's an important game and you need to win the toss. So, what are the chances or to be specific, the probability of getting ahead? Now, you can try to find it with an actual experiment like toss the coin 100 times and record how many times you got ahead. If you get ahead 58 times, it means the chances or the probability of getting head is 58 out of 100 that is 0 0.58 this probability is based on the result of an actual experiment so we can call it experimental or empirical probability you know statistician Carl Pearson tossed a coin 24,000 times and got 12,012 heads. So, the experimental probability of a head was 12,012 divided by 24,000 which is 0 0.5005. Now, we cannot spend that kind of time in tossing coins, right? But, his finding tells us that the probability of getting head will come closer and closer to 1 by 2 that is 0 0.5 if the number of observations increases because head is one of the two sides of the coin either head or tail. Theoretically the probability of getting head is supposed to be 1 by 2 or 0 0.5 because on tossing the coin you can either get a head or a tail as head is one of the two sides of a coin. So 0 0.5 is the theoretical probability of getting head when tossing a coin. Now in real life we use experimental probability too many times without even realizing. For example whether Aman will come on time today or not. For this, we try to remember how many times he was late in past. Say, in last 30 days, he was late just once. So, the probability of event E that he would be late is number of times of the event happened divided by total number of observations. So, number of times he was late is 1 and the total number of observation is 30 days or we can say 30 observations in total. So, probability of Aman coming late is 1 divided by 30 and this is equal to 0 0.03. Thus, we see the probability of Aman coming late is too low and we think like that when we try to guess something about someone or some event in our day-to-day -day life. Now, the experimental probability is not the right approach for all cases and all the time. Sometimes repeating an event can be too expensive or infeasible. For example, what is the probability of failure of a satellite? Even a country cannot afford to launch 100 satellites just for the sake of experiment. In such cases, we have to rely on theoretical probability. The theoretical probability or the classical probability of an event E is written as P of E and it is defined as the number of outcomes favorable to E divided by number of all possible outcomes of the experiment where we assume that the outcomes of the experiment are equally likely to happen. Now let's take an example. Say there is one green, one red and one blue ball pen in the box. Now Aman took out a pen without watching. So what is the probability that Aman would draw red ball pen? Well it is equally likely that he takes out any one of these that is 
either red or green or blue ball pen so here we see the total possible outcomes are 3 let r be the event that the pen taken out is red ball pen now the number of outcomes favoring r is 1 because all events are equally likely and the total number of outcomes is equal to 3 so we say PR is equal to 1 by 3 that is there are 1 out of 3 chances that a red ball pen is picked up by Aman same way the possibility of picking or drawing a green ball pen is PG and this is equal to 1 by 3 same way the possibility of drawing or picking up a blue ball pen is equal to PB and this is equal to 1 by 3 you know an event having only one outcome of the experiment is called an elementary event now if we sum up the probabilities of all different possible events we get a 1 so in this case the probability of getting a red pen plus the probability of getting a green pen plus the probability of getting a blue pen is equal to 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 and this is equal to 1. That's all for now. Bye-bye.